episode 26 of The Mom Game. We are thrilled that you have hopefully come back for a repeat visit, or if you're checking us out for the first time, we're glad you're with us. I'm Emily Jones. I am joined by my partner, Julie Dobbs. Hey, and look who we have stuck in the middle with us. It's <laughs> little Dan McDowell from The Little Ticket. Okay, so if... if hello. For, for, hello. <laughs> for those who maybe are new to I'm our podcast, it. you're slaying it so far. Um, I feel like we, we just assume that people yeah. know who we are, what we do, where we work, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Emily, work for the Rangers, 20 some odd years in TV. Julie? Yes, yeah, so I work at um, The Ticket, the aforementioned Ticket, and I've been there a couple of years, and I've had the privilege to be on a show with this guy next to me, Dan McDowell, at The Ticket, which is a sports talk radio in Dallas, in case... Somebody doesn't know. We've heard there's people watching us all over the world. We're listening we're all really over big the world. In like Ohio. Worldwide. Ohio. Mm. We're big in Ohio. That's far away. It's far away. It's like over a thousand miles away. You're familiar with Ohio. Yes. Though. Yeah. So yeah. I work on a show with Dan, but he's been there a long time um, hosting Bad Radio at the ticket. And he's just an awesome dude, one of the funniest people I know. That's why we wanted him to be on here. He also is a hashtag girl dad with two daughters of his own. That so we correct. figured, why not talk some parenting with him? Dan, welcome. Thank told, you so much for coming. I was telling my younger daughter before I left that I was coming to do a podcast called The Mom Game and that you would talk about sports and parenting. Yes. And I said they needed to get an expert at parenting, someone who is very good at parenting. <laughs> and she that. looked up from her phone and rolled her eyes and... You know, Sounds went back onto right. her business. So. Okay, so what kind? I was raised by my dad. My sister and I both raised by my dad. Um, he was a hashtag girl dad OG. For you, what kind of what kind of girl dad are you? And what are so? And can I say this? I feel like you're you're gonna get a lot back of what you've dished out. I think with your girls. Not even knowing them, but I think you're going to be tortured in ways. Oh, it's Julie will tell you if she's heard some of the audio. They've already. They own me. Yeah. <laughs> they own me, and I tried to. Mike Reiner told me a long time ago, because when I first had a kid, I said I want to raise her to be independent with her own thoughts and and not need anybody. She doesn't need a man. Blah blah blah. All that uh, BS, right? And he said, "You don't want that. You don't want her doing things on her own." And and he was right. In the long run, he's been right about just about everything. Okay, so tell us about but, your girls. Um, ages, names, that kind of thing. Uh. 18 and 16 now. Wow. And one girl is supposed to be going to college soon. She got into Clemson, but they've delayed their on-campus stuff for a little bit. Uh, but they happily took the tuition. Oh, <laughs> so they didn't course. cut that down at all. And then I have uh, the other daughter is 16, but doesn't have a license yet. Is okay. very curiously not into worrying about getting a driver's license. Her sister needed it right away. And um, she, you know, goes to high school, but she goes online right now. So are you encouraging the driver's license? Because, like, I can't, for one, cannot wait for my kids to tote themselves around. Um, I thought I would be like that, but I love uh, taking the kids here and there. It's really fun. It just keeps them needing me, kind of. So I, I kind of don't mind it. But I was very happy when the older daughter did get her license because she started needing, she was needing picked up from band and such at like midnight and one in the morning and uh, she didn't have her license. So it was me that had to go get her. So I hated that. Uh, so I am glad that she does have her license and she does a lot of stuff. So I, I couldn't take her everywhere she needs to go. But, but I'm sad that they're getting this old because they're yeah. out of the awesome zone where I think you guys have kids in. And I, lo I loved it. I loved it up until they were, you know, I was a coach for the different teams and all that kind of stuff. And I, 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 you know, we make fun of the hashtag girl dad thing because calling yourself a hashtag girl dad implies in some way that it's worse to be a girl dad or like to have a daughter as if you wouldn't want a daughter, but you know what? It's not bad. It's you can, not that bad you can have a, a daughter. So I, I, that's why we, we even say that all the time because it's just to make fun of the, and it was after Kobe died, right? They yeah. started the big hashtag girl dad. Like, oh, he was, what a good father, even though he had girls. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't believe he would spend time with girls. But uh, I've loved it. Um, one kid is a jock. The older one is a jock, and she had all the teams. And the other one is uh, very artistic and into theater and, uh, you know, comedy and all that kind of stuff. And she's 
you know, she can hang with anybody as far as roasting them. And <laughs> it, it's, it's fantastic. To me, it's, it's the reason why if I got the uh, hot young wife, like so many people do when they get older, um, so many dudes will do, right? They you get do the that. hot young wife. So you not only there, there is a trend. Not There's only trend to, to be able to climb atop the hot young wife and do stuff to her, but uh, really the more <laughs> the reason would be I'd love to have kids again. It was so fun. Just the whole Oh my Jesus, the, what are you talking about? I, I love hearing this oh though, because Emily and I are both just in the weeds right now. With our little kids. And you want like babies, babies? Like but, you want to produce a baby in a belly and all that stuff. Well, or and a, that's, or that's a, a lab weird bit. Else. It's very weird that you even had something grow in you that. <laughs> Isn't it weird? It's just it's ridiculous. Like was, alien stuff. Yeah. Like anything that's ever come out of me smells real bad and yeah. then you have to get rid of it. But if you. <laughs> any, It's come out of you and it probably that's was really real gross point. at the beginning, but. It, then it grow. It's weird. Like that was in you. Yeah. Like it's, it's yeah. It's baffling to me. But um, no, I loved it. But I will admit, I also wasn't stay at home full time dad. I, you know, went to work and came home to a tired wife who handed me crying baby, and then that was really fun. And and my time slot being on from noon to three allowed me to get home by four. And then I'd play with the kids till, you know, eight or so. And then they would go to bed because we had a pretty strict, rigid, you know, we didn't have the, you could sleep with us or yeah. up as late as you want. Was no, that you were, or your wife that both implemented all the strict, both of you guys? We were very right? in lockstep on that. That's good. And because we had heard, you know, you can train them and you can't, that's why I like them a lot. I don't want to say I didn't like, don't like my kids now, but I liked them when I could totally control them. <laughs> and they did what I wanted, and they went yeah. to bed at eight. Uh, maybe nine would be staying up late, you know. Yeah. Um, but it, but it to me it was really fun because then I could have the weekends and just play, and I would play with my kids every night till eight or nine, and then I could do my work stuff. And uh, but I did not have, I wasn't in the weeds as much as you guys are probably, and that's why I say I'd do it again in a second. So I want to know what your wife is like. Like I want to know. Because I like think, how she can put up with him twenty four seven. Yes, because you're a needler. Like that's your shtick, right? That's what you do. I don't even think it's a shtick. I just think it's your personality. Well, she's told me often we're not on the air. <laughs> right. So you don't She'll have to say do that. that. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, she's uh. You know, she's fine. She's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, she, like the porn references and the. You know, that that stuff, she's, you know, the whole, I'll like, get a younger wife and make some more babies. Like, she's <laughs> well, she's long, just, like, cool with that. Uh, I, well, I don't know. But a long time ago, she used to listen to the station. And she'd, you know, yammer and complain about this or that that I said. And, in fact, once she even, uh, she got kicked out of her local mom's group. Oh, dear. Because we were doing, you know, a fun segment about, there was like an article that said, you've seen these articles before, which talk about how much should a stay at home mom make? Oh, I've heard you talk about this. <laughs> and the article suggested it was like $230,000 yes. a year or something yes. just it totally should, ridiculous. It should be twice that. And uh, then I would want to, I would demand a salary then when I was at home on the weekend, if I, if you were going to get paid for this stuff and it's, it's not parenting. Um, I thought, I, whatever we were just doing, and you know, added a little comedy, maybe exaggerated oh. a bit, just for oh. just for fun, uh, for the males that are twenty five to fifty four to oh. hold up their pennant mm-hmm. and say yes. Target audience. Yeah. Uh, so she got her mom group anyway. Told you know, didn't invite her back. Yeah. How did He's they not hear? Championing our cause. Were they listening? He's not helping us. Or word just got back to them. Via I don't the know. Gossip. There's always a listener or two. Yeah, and there's always somebody ready to run to your wife and tell them what to. Or, I'm sure someone's run to Kelly and did you hear blah 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 and you know it's just comedy. It's just it's just yeah. fun. It's just fun and we're just uh, I, goofing around. I might have like fallen in line with you a little bit too much <laughs> in that regard because sometimes I just feel like. I say stuff on the radio that I think is going to fit in with the conversation. Not like I ever lie. Yeah. But there's times, you know, I don't I don't know that I shed Kelly in the best light, but you know what? He doesn't care. Yeah, like, whatever. He 
A doesn't listen in yeah. in because he's usually busy, or he would, I think. Um, or B, he's just like he's he knows that it's he takes it all with a grain of salt because it's radio and we're having fun and he's he's awesome. It sounds like a lot like your wife is just kind of understand that everything we say isn't real and you don't need to go home and fight about it. No, that's so I didn't finish my story. So she does care. Oh, or oh. did. <laughs> yeah. And I said, here's the thing. This won't change. What I'm doing is not going to change. So you could either keep listening and be mad about it all the time or just totally stop listening. There's no reason for you to listen. You're not entertained or anything. Don't listen. And she said, okay. And she has not listened in over 15 years. Do people still go tattle to her, though? Uh, occasionally, yeah. Because yeah. she works at a school, so she'll get oh. people coming to her and blah, blah, blah. This happened or this happened. She'll be like, uh, uh, really? I don't know. Like That's, that's the how best she way heard to be. Reiner retired was or left the station. I right. guess he hasn't totally retired in life. Uh, and then she comes home and says, why didn't you tell me that? And I'm like, I don't know. You know it's I don't, think you cared. I don't detail her, you know, everything that happened at, at my job the way she does to me, let's just say. <laughs> so, okay, so she works. I would have never known this because you portray her as this woman who sits at home looking at laundry that's never going to get done and this is true. waiting for her mother to come into town so she can organize the house. Oh, boy, I love her mother. <laughs> she does have a great mother. Um <laughs> It, like, that's how I'm attracted. That's my porn, You're is like, having her mom, oh, a mother-daughter duo cleaning the room. It's, uh, cleaning look how my the mother stuff. will, will uh, dust the, in between the, the, the shutters, you know? It's, it's amazing. She's a nervous cleaner. Yeah. Uh, but um, she just got a job in the last few years. As the kids got a little older and didn't need her anymore, she, you know, since they're away, she, she felt like, I got to get out of the house uh, because maybe like the COVID era, right? She's just, she was stir crazy just being at the house and had trouble motivating herself to do things, uh, you know, even around the house. So she did get out and got an actual paying job. So do you, are you, do you work, not worry, but do you, have you started to anticipate what it's going to be like when it's just the two of you and there are no kids in the house? Like when you're empty nesters? Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't know what I'm, I don't know. That's why I got to get the new wife. That's <laughs> just because. Just get ahead of that. There were many weekends that I would, you know, we'd be busy with uh, soccer in the morning and then softball and then this and then band and this. And, and then I would just wonder, what did we used to do before yeah. we had kids? What did we do on the weekend? Did we just work on making kids over and over? No. Uh, <laughs> Probably not. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, I <laughs> certainly really my tea that. is not as high as it used to be. So I probably did a little of that, but. Uh, I don't know. It, it'll be weird. I, I don't know if I'll like it or if she'll like it because I, I like having the kids around. It's something, you know, it's it's like a time kill, right? Yeah. And they're I, fun. They are fun. They're they fun are. to mess around with. So you coached the, the sports. You were the you were the coach. Softball, was it mainly? or? Yeah, I started in soccer because no one else wanted to. No one does. And then once the kids got old enough, uh, all the other teams were killing us because I don't know anything about soccer. Uh, so then yeah. I was a basketball coach for a little while, which was a lot of pressure because, uh, what's his name? There's a guy named Gerald Soule who played for the New York Jets for like over a decade. And he lives in my town. And he had two daughters who were extremely tall. And he would come to my practices and... I could just feel him judging me because I was not practicing them hard. And I'm, I'm a fun coach, right? I'm not trying to, to raise uh, athletes, but he was trying to raise an athlete. And they would go on to be really good in high school and stuff like that. Uh, but um, that was a lot of pressure because we weren't good. And I had like these world-class athletes and I was just having fun. Uh, and then softball was pretty much where I, I made my name. Yeah, Many people have talked about the heights I could have climbed, the legend. maybe kind of a Chris Woodward type guy yeah. where I'd, <laughs> I'd come out of nowhere, but my interviews would get me the job. And But I did retire. Shots fired. I'm not going back. Well, no, I'm not firing a shot at Chris Woodward. Okay. But he, it, it isn't like he was... Just like a, you're saying, a, he did really well in his interviews. Killed it. Yeah. 
without and he had a without great, a resume. <laughs> oh, I don't know what okay. his resume was really. I'm sure it's 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 glowing. But mm-hmm. my resume was fantastic. Our uh, final record, uh, unbelievable mm-hmm. the softball. Record. Do you remember it by chance? Uh, no, not exactly. No. But it was well, <laughs> well above 500. Yeah. But you, you know, it's all trophies? about the pitching, Emily. Yeah, it it's really, really <laughs> when it comes uh, down to it, you you know the game. It, I do, I do. If I, the kids get yeah. trophies, that's what matters at the end of the day. It depends on what age that is. Yeah. Wait, so we, we, I have a question to ask you, just as a, a a parent of youth sport child. So Henry, <laughs> my nine year old, they started getting rings when they win tournaments, and it makes me crazy. A ring. A ring. Not a little trophy. We played in a tournament this last weekend, won it, and they got trophies. And I was like, I love this tournament. They give trophies instead of rings. Rings. And then they all take pictures like this. Wow. With their fist out, with the ring on. They're getting rings at tournaments. I don't understand it. And it makes me really uncomfortable. Is it better than, well, the trophy, once you're in enough tournaments, you'll find that you have a lot of trophies that you you don't want to keep. Right. And so guess, at least the ring, you could just kind of put it in a little box right. or something. Yeah. But I mean, sport, you, is it the same way with girls? Because I haven't, Hattie's played little small soccer, but I will say we had a game the other day. There was a mom yelling from the, t- there's seven. She yelled from the time the game started until the time it was over. And we had to all wear masks or everyone's wearing a mask. Yeah. She would pull the mask down, <laughs> just yell, yeah. let's go! Get the ball! <laughs> Literally, that pitch the entire time. She would do it, put, pull the mask down, yell, and then put it back up. And I just was like, okay, I cheer, encourage your kid. But like, it was it an octave it was, it, that I have not experienced? And I, I just could, I just thought, d- you have to pull the mask down to that's yell. That's what, that's what I, can't, I couldn't understand. Oh, the yell she, would just come back the, in your ma- face with the mask on. You've was, got to get it out there let, into the world. Let me tell you something. That that sound was going <laughs> wherever. Not, I can imagine. I, your just, impression was please. pretty terrible. And I just kept thinking. I kept looking around. Like, am I the only one who thinks this is So you're not a coach? Really sweet. Because I, I know Julia's dabbled in coaching. So yeah. I coach Henry's basketball team. I'll coach my son's basketball team. I, d- I, can't, I, I, don't, I can't do soccer. It makes me crazy. Soccer, it, in general, makes me crazy. Uh-huh. Hattie plays because she wants to be with her girlfriends. She tried baseball one year. She, did not, she, she loved the idea of it, and then when it came down to it, she was not into it. So we did baseball for one year. She does soccer basically so she can just socialize with her friends. Um, but, yeah, I coach Henry's basketball team. And I do – I will say – I do get competitive there, uh, but I feel like when you're the coach, you can't act a fool. Oh, as but, much. and I would yes, you get competitive, and then you find yourself in your head, like uh, our team is coming back in the final inning, right? And we're mounting a rally, and we've scored two. We need two more, and there's this girl on the mound, and you could tell how upset. Now this is the girl from the other team, and she's 12 or 11, but in my head, like then she throws a wild pitch. And now her fans are yelling, and they're upset with her, but our team is, is all happy. And then I'm just thinking about, in my head, I'm rooting for her to, to fail. <laughs> so sad. To, her kid. I want yes. her to – she's, she's going to lose this game because I could feel it. Yeah. The momentum, right, uh-huh. Julie? Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and we did. We won the game, and I remember thinking that night, there's this little girl at home probably just crying, and her Be parents are telling her that it's okay. Well, I hope they're at least doing that. And – you know, then I think, well, maybe it'd be better if we lost because at least I know I'll be telling my kid it's okay, whereas her parent might be yelling at her because she lost. You and know, there are some that are so hard on their kids, and it's like, okay, I mean, you got to, you, you can't. That you have to pull them aside, and you don't right. want to contradict their parents, but yes. you have to say, hey, look, it's gonna be all right. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. Okay. Don't worry, your dad's an idiot. I yeah. Um, so I have a question for you, just like. It, in general, like, do you ever get uncomfortable? Like, is there, do you ever get like, is there anything I could say that would Emily make wants you uncomfortable? To try. No, no, I don't want to try, but like, <laughs> I just feel like. It's not what she told me last week. Your personality <laughs> is such where you just, you're, you're relatively chill. unfazed by things. Like when Julie called you out on the press box hot thing. I was just thinking that's the <laughs> most uncomfortable <laughs> I've been in years. has got to be the years. most uncomfortable you've ever been in your life. Right. I mean, it's got to be up there. Because I really like Julie, and um, I don't remember saying that at all. Like, I'd probably say so many things that 
like you yeah. know what yeah, do yeah. I mean them? I don't know. It's just we're just having some fun and uh, but and you know would that make me step back and not say it again because somebody out there could be thinking uh, no I probably won't you know we'll go ahead and ruin An- Anthony Andrews' life or whoever we're making fun of right. on the air <laughs> uh, you know um, but yeah I suppose being on the radio not seeing an audience and yeah. not dealing with the people usually that uh, that we're having fun with. Um, yeah, because you're able I to don't hide. Have to be uncomfortable. Hide. So t- we need to tell the story, to quick recap for those who aren't familiar with the Press Box Hot Story. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. I think we should. So Julie, please. Yeah. Um, so, okay, I'll tell it quickly. Yeah. So ten, 10-ish years ago, <laughs> eight, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago, something like that, I was listening to bad radio with Bob and Dan and they were playing some of the audio that I had when I used to do basically like Emily's job I did it for one to two seasons I tried on Friday nights and I as an aside I remember sometimes texting Emily and be like Emily this was a terrible game what the hell do I ask these guys (laughs) and she would text me and be like you know your generic like you lost the game questions um and if you texted Jim Knox he'd be like find an Asian fan <laughs> and interview them. Right. Find somebody really old. So maybe, oh, which you did, I uh, think. Yes. You I found did. somebody really old. So that's what it was. Thank you for bringing is it back the to the press like, box it is. Find it the is. oldest fan we can people here and talk old, to them. People love old people. <laughs> yeah, who people doesn't like a old sweet old person? And they, you never know what they're going to say. They say crazy shit, you right. know? Exactly. They really really do. By the way, speaking of you saying what that trying to, change to interrupt your story for a moment. Just your casual dropping of swear words on here is kind of weird to me. Only that <laughs> is it you, jarring? yeah, just because. First of all, it's my sweet Emily Jones who's on the <laughs> broadcast, and she would never speak like that. Uh, number one, number two, just when I'm near a microphone, I'm just used to being. Yeah, buttoned up. yeah, you can't say that. Stuff. And I generally don't speak like that at home either, so it's just a weird. <laughs> Yeah. Thing out of the blue. You seem to be able to very easily <laughs> casually fun. throw the uh, S bomb out there. Yeah. We can but do then whatever go right we back want and in this talk room, to Dave Dan. and CJ and, yeah. and it is it, it's an absolute effing miracle that I have not. <laughs> What's the worst thing you've ever said on the air here, Julie? Oh here, here? she's dropped all C bomb? No, C no bomb. Would you? I've never no. said the C word. I've never word. said a C word. That one's gross. In your life. I don't think so. Interesting. It does gross me out. That word just grosses me out. That's a terrible word. And it's I wouldn't an say that word. I wouldn't say that F bomb either here. I don't think oh, F I've, effing, but I wouldn't like I I say it full on. I have a I my mouth is I have a very, very I have a terrible mouth. I have a huge potty mouth. I was raised by my daddy and he cussed like a sailor <laughs> and I followed right in line. There is at Fox Sports Southwest, there is a file on a computer somewhere. That is nothing but me losing my shit on camera, <laughs> taping stuff. And they put it together for me on a reel one year. And I... Well, took, I'd love to see that. I took it home to my dad. Well, I know some people who work over there. And I was like, I just want you to see this, just in case this somebody's going to use this against me at some point in my life. And here, so here it is. And he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen in his life. And he thought it was hilarious. So back, back to the Back to the story that story. I tried to avoid. You were trying yes. to. So anyway, I'm listening to the ticket... Um, I was doing Rangers games on Friday nights at that point, and I was interviewing an old lady Mm -hmm. who I brought her some cookies, and that's become another drop on the ticket. But they were, we brought you some cookies. I sound like like a little kid. (laughs) Um, So anyway, they're playing the audio because on bad radio, that's what they do. They play audio of people and make fun of it. Oh my gosh, I'll rip somebody for two (laughs) segments today. The TNT, the the basketball (laughs) broadcast. Oh, and the Cowboys broadcast, just slamming them. Oh, just having fun. We weren't slamming anyone. Just having fun with Blue Star. I know. Okay, go ahead. Yes, so make fun of of people on TV. So they were making fun of me on bad radio. And at that point, I worked for the Stars and I had a desk job. I just worked one year for the Stars. Um, where I sat there all day and I listened to the ticket. And so I heard this. And so they're sitting there making fun of me. They replay the audio. And they're making fun of how I said the old lady was a Rangers fan her whole life because that's not possible. <laughs> and she's old. They haven't been around that long. So that was like the whole thing. And then uh, so Dan just kind of casually is like, oh, yeah. And they're thinking of, I guess you were obviously had watched. You were listening to audio, but you had watched too. So I guess you knew what I looked like. And you were like, yeah, uh, so... We knew you from the Stars games. So, Oh, that's what it was. Because we went um, to every Stars game. We did the post game. Yeah, show. you said that Julie Dobbs, she's always in the press box at the Stars games. And then you're like, ah, oh, so press box hot. 
And I was listening, so my ears perked up, and I'm like, what? And then I, I was dating Kelly at that point. And so that afternoon I'm talking to him. I was like, they were talking about me on bad radio. And the only thing that that really stood out was like the the press box hot thing because I didn't really understand it. So then Kelly is like kind of explaining to me what he <laughs> thinks it means. So that was a long time ago. And then never in a million years did I think that I would A, be doing radio or B, be working with Dan. Because at that point, I mean, and I knew you had like talked to Dirk about you know Hitler and the German like his whole thing and like that's kind of who you were to me it was like you were this shock, guy shock, shock, well shock. I, I I thought I don't know I just I just thought that you were like I guess like meaner or ruder than you really are a hundred percent um and so asshole yeah I thought, you say? I thought you, Have were, you used that I, word on this show I thought you were yeah. an a-hole mm-hmm. um for sure so so then I go and I'm get the job and I'm going to be on your show. But I also knew I loved y'all's show. I wasn't like a hardcore P1 obsessed with it, but I knew I enjoyed it and it was fun and loose. And I loved Bob talking about the stars. And that's why I think I was more familiar with your show. So anyway, now we're coworkers. And one of the only things that I know about you pertaining to me is that you'd call me press box hot. And so it had just been stuck in my head. So we're sitting there in the middle of a show. And I think that you had a guest follow through uh, Gabe Kapler, I think it was, was supposed to call in and he didn't. Speaking and of so, hot. Speaking of hot. So it was like a 2.30 end of the day segment, just kind of like a throwaway. And I think y'all are like, well, let's just talk to Julie. Like she's here. So then all of a sudden we start talking about what I had done and worked for the Rangers. And then I it clicked and I was like, I'm going to call him out. So beautiful. And I just said, yeah, Dan, when I had that job is when you called me press box hot and just put him on the spot and he went into full denial mode like this never happened and he was 100% convinced that it had never happened. So then Jake, God bless him, (laughs) was determined to find the audio and so he and I were texting and I'm talking to Kelly. Speaking of asshole. (laughs) <laughs> nobody no, there Jake, is an, nobody there is an a-hole that's what the best part of all this is everybody's awesome so mm-hmm. J- jake and i are texting and i'm texting or going through with kelly and we like have this we're making all these notes and, and trying to figure out the date like when could it possibly be i'm looking at the rangers schedule from 2008 or whatever or i think it was 2011 actually um and we were able to track down the audio and so that was another surprise when jake released the audio to dan and it was all confirmed that he did in fact say that and it was more of a and then you had the excuse it was more of a <laughs> you were the, the press, press box, box hot, hot. Press oh, not a press yeah, box hot. A, the. but what does press box hot mean because people might not know you know like ohio hot so, okay <laughs> compared <laughs> to you know if an ohio girl she's a 10 in ohio well yeah. she's like a seven in la right okay i'm not a big fan of great putting numbers on women but whatever okay um but th- but i will she's say an a. but I, there you go letters <laughs> better So what I will say, though, and, you know, I'm, you know, champion for women, all about it, right? Women in sports, everything, obviously, 20 years of doing this shit. So, but when I talk to young women about being, and they ask about being in the clubhouse, they ask about whatever, and I was like, don't ever get flattered by someone who gives you compliments or hits on you in a clubhouse, because it's basically the equivalent, and this sounds bad, but it's... (laughs) I don't even know if I want to say it. Say it. But it's like going, like if you walk into, and not saying going into a clubhouse is like going into a prison, but like you're, you're, you're the only (laughs) chick. They're thirsty. Right. (laughs) You're the only chick. So it's like if, there's not a whole lot else to look at at that point in time. And so just don't get too carried away that. It's like you could be sports funny. You're the. So if you're listening to the Cowboys broadcast or, you know, Michael Irvin seems really hilarious. Yeah. Would he be hilarious standing on stage at the improv? Probably not. You know, so he's sports yeah. funny. In sports, yeah. that's shocking things he's saying, and they're really funny. funny, but not out in real life. It's a good analogy. Same thing. Same thing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you're the only. I mean, if, you so know. you're in there. Everybody's going gaga over you, and you have to remember. Well, and but that's what he was saying about me in the press right. box. Then, is then, you're then, the only girl in the press box. Yes. It's a bunch of frumpy old dudes. Yes. And then you're the girl in there. God so bless. you're hot because nobody else around right. you and God is bless. even female. No, you could be Ohio <laughs> hot. That's also L.A. hot. Right. You know, like okay, Julie. okay. If you could there, be yeah. the press box hot at the and Stars also, game, but then in real life, uh, when you, we see you in the wild, in the then, wild, then you're also in a big crowd. Crowd hot would probably be yeah. the best one, right? Or like, what's the best one? <laughs> I think just hot. runway supermodel. Like, uh, where are there a bunch of hot people? 
Right. I don't know. I say L.A., right? Yeah, the beach. Yeah, the beach. California so it depends beach which beach hot. Oh, yeah. man, that'd be hot. But I... Depends which concert. I loved doing. how that all worked out, and I bet part of the reason you were so, like taken aback and freaked out is because he didn't really know me yet and what if I was really actually pissed and like well, I knew decided you... I hated him and was gonna be out to get him it's like no I just had to clear the air with this before we move on and have a long fun show it, relationship it, it with each other it takes a while to get your sense of humor I mean it's not you You can it, it's very evolved in higher level than most people are <laughs> able to to really yeah. to track but, but I knew Julie all, all the porn you watch is whoa has, whoa <laughs> So you just believe everything we we hear on the radio? Yeah, I, if you say it, I believe it. Um, you know too many details to be mm. making that up. <laughs> <laughs> too many. Well, too many no, I knew that. Julie had it in her because, and I like it when she fires her bullets elsewhere, but oh, she yeah. had Fire, called out yeah. Jake early on because Jake once did a segment about names that he hates, oh, that people are yes, naming their kids nowadays. Too. And I think he put Ryder in the crosshairs. Like, yeah. oh, what a gay name, unfair. man. Unfair, yeah. And then uh, Julie walked in day two, and she's like, yeah, so you're the guy that doesn't like the name Ryder, huh? <laughs> well, I got two kids. One's Ryder. Name Ryder. Yeah. Yes. And, and Ryder did not deserve to be in that group. He did not. And Some I thought that was do, hilarious. But Ryder is normal. Ryder's a great normal. Yeah. Maybe like, I mean, it's not a Dan or a Bob or a Jake. It's a little bit more different than that, but it's not weird. It's not super weird. So I had to call him out on that because, I love it. And I because lo- that's my It's not song. R-E-I-G-H. Exactly. In that case, then that would yeah. be fair. Yeah. But in my case, it was not fair. He said just because there's a Y in it. I'm like, well, there's a Y in a lot of names. <laughs> so, so judgy. You yes. Guys. Yes. So, so I just judgy. had to set a few things straight before we continued on with the show and it's all been fine and great well, I since think then that moment where dan was probably the most uncomfortable he's ever been in his life how else would you get uncomfortable something let's talk more behold. about that what it, have okay let's do it now have uh, any of your girls started dating or what's that like over at your house because i bet that's got to be weird and uncomfortable uh but not really they they really haven't too much my daughters are not they're more into not the girly, fluffy, girly, pink yeah. flower type things. Right. So they don't care about the school dance and okay. things like that. My daughter went to, my older daughter went to uh, the, not junior prom, but something, homecoming when she was young, mm-hmm. but then she younger, sophomore or something, but never went after that. So they're not really in the dating game. So I've I've somehow avoided that. But you know it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So what if she comes back from Clemson and um, has a boyfriend and wants you to meet him? Okay, I thought what? you were going to say and had a baby. So well, having a boyfriend would be fine. Way better. <laughs> yeah, and what be kind fun. of dad are you going to be when your daughter starts dating? Have you God thought about that? that? Are you going to be the guy that's like, you know, I got a gun in the back in case uh, you're not here by 11 o'clock and that kind of dad? Or are you just going to be super cool laid back about it all? I haven't thought about it too much. You need to think about but it. But I'll probably be fine. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy when they're happy. Yeah. If they what got, if you think he's a creep? If I think he's a creep? Yeah. Well, then, yeah, that'll be bothersome. You got to let them figure it out on their own, though. Because they have had, you know, some girlfriends that I've thought were a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> you got to let them, with the boys, you got to let them figure it out on their own. It's yeah, that's, that's, that's the hardest part of uh, parenting overall, I think, is to let them do yeah. things that are bad or fail or... You know, because I, I don't want them to ever cry or to ever be heartbroken yeah. or to have every, anything wrong with them. And you do to, have a soul. He but does. to hold He's back and to dad. not help them do something is yeah. the worst. Yeah, I agree. It's hard. This yeah. parenting shit ain't easy, Dan. I'll tell you what. Well, you well have- and anybody can do it. That's the thing. And there's it's terrifying. No, no test, no oh, yeah. prerequisites, no application process. <laughs> Because yeah. like I waited till I was over 30 and I still am pretty sure I messed up a ton. That's again, second wife, new kids. I'm sure I'll do I'll it better it next time. Yeah. I will. My dad did it and his second kid must have had it way better than I did. Yeah. That's a great strategy if it works Yeah, out but for you it. don't want to be like changing diapers yeah. right now and chasing a two-year-old around. It's so exhausting. You could do that at this point in your life. Uh, again, for a couple hours after real work and right. then you know but if i had to do it all real the time work. i Man. probably wouldn't be into it you guys have different memories of that yeah because it was yeah. yours all day right no no i mean when you're working we were i mean i was working the whole time oh you never had a period of time where you were it's uh six weeks of maternity leave 
Okay. With each kid. That's still quite an extended time. It is. Because you're in the weeds. Then you go back to work. It's all work. Oh, yeah, you yeah. didn't have like people that when you come back to work, they're kind of thinking, oh, you've been off for six weeks. Uh, oh, I guess you haven't been working. Crocker. Well, now you can get back to work. Yeah. Mm. We're see. actually probably that's your break, right? Oh, for sure. Still now it is. When the ranger season started back up, I was like, hell yes. Like the first, so first kid we did it, you know, it was just regular. Second kid we had a, uh, you could call it a nanny, but it was just a nighttime babysitter Monday through, or Sunday through Thursday. So you get to sleep. She would come in at 10 p.m. and she would leave at 6 a.m. Because I thought that was just tough. My wife, I would let her sleep. And then she, you know, I had to do the overnight stuff and get up for the show and all that kind of stuff the next day. So it was really for me, probably more than her, that we hired the the babysitter for the first three months Night of nurse. the second girl's life. That's Night amazing. nurse, can we call it that? Yeah, whatever it takes. Nanny to sounds kind of hoity and to... too rich, but. Yeah, I need a Saturday morning, like come in from like seven to 10 and just let me sleep like once. Yeah. That's well, the you know the story that I, that I got in trouble for. the. <laughs> yeah. During the so the second birth was a C-section. Um, you guys in, into that? You know what that's all about. I have, have are, to, are we in? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't. So, it the both of the ways seem bad, right? <laughs> Getting your yeah. whole stomach cut open, yeah. or the other way seems even worse. But you know, whatever. So it was a <laughs> C-section, so she had to stay overnight at the mm-hmm. hospital. But I had my little two-year-old uh, that I had to take back home. And I was kind of a late night guy back then more than now. Now I get up probably around 7.30 or 8 o'clock every day. Then I would wake up, you know, on the weekend, I would wake up at 11 or noon for sure. It was great. Wow. It was just the way I I was. Like the Rangers had a pitcher who was really like that too. His name escapes me right now. I I slept till noon? But he would sleep till 1, he said. And I can't remember. He was like my soulmate when he was on the (laughs) team. I'll remember it after this thing's done. And then it won't be worth anything. But no, so C-section, I took the daughter home and I knew I would stay up and I didn't want to get up because the daughter would get up at 6 or 6.30. So I called the babysitter and said, hey, what if I, will you come over at 6 and, you know, you got the key and blah, blah, blah. And she came over and watched uh, my older daughter until I woke up around noon or whatever. And then I sent her on her way. And... I didn't tell my wife I was going to do this because she's at the hospital with an actual newborn child. with the new baby. Uh-huh. And I was up that night playing Tiger Woods golf online with a guy I knew in California. Mm-hmm. So his time zone was earlier. So I was up pretty late. You know, you have to understand. Hashtag priorities. And it was a Saturday. So uh, like two weeks later, the next time my wife needed the babysitter, she had her come over and, you know, in their small talk, she somehow discovered that she was there the day of the birth. And she's like, wait, what? You were here that next day? She's like, oh yeah, I came in at 6 a.m. And so I got in pretty big trouble for that. As you should. Why? As you should. I watched. I don't know. My job was to make sure the kid was taken care of, which I, I did. It's very resourceful. I'll give you that. With money. It's, it's very, a, it's a very system resourceful. we have. That is of, important. It is. Sleep is important. And I helped employ a young girl. There you are. I help the economy, trickle good. down economics. Yeah. That's a good point. You're a good man, Dan. You're a good man. I think I help society. I brought you a gift. Oh, you did? This is a, it's an old bad radio, the old bad radio calendar, but it features oh. a lot of Julie. I didn't bring one for you because. Wow. Yeah, I've got you one. You own one. You're this in it. This is amazing. Yeah. I have always wanted one of these, actually. Features I... Julie. And if you want the uh, the story of the picture Julie wouldn't let us take, I'll tell you about that later. Uh, and here, oh, here's yeah. a pack of bad radio matches. Okay. Oh. There you go. Never know when you're going to need to light up. Yeah. Well, that's it. for the bathroom usually. This is. I don't have like any bad radio swag, which is sad. So you look at Julie as oh, Allie McBeal. She's adorable. Isn't she? Yeah. We just had to turn the calendar on me though. <laughs> sad. So adorable. She's. Now we're in September. I love it. Em, yeah. if you have to bail, I can wrap things up with Dan or. You guys are great. I love this. Um, we... I do like your banter and everything. Thanks. It's awesome. We Thanks. have fun. We do. It's fun having like just the freedom, I guess, and no rules. Talk about whatever we want. Say it's a whatever cool format. We want. Can say shit. We can cuss. I was going to say yeah. you should do a little weekend show on the ticket or something, but they probably wouldn't let you do that stuff. No, they wouldn't. They're not ready for us on the ticket. No, yeah. they're not ready for us. Definitely not. <laughs> um, okay. 
What else? Do you have anything? You want me to bail on you? Well, if you have to go. Um, I do, because i got to get to work. Okay. Okay, I'll let you guys wrap up. Okay. Okay. One um, thing I want to know, when was Dave Raymond's birthday? I heard you talking about singing Dave oh, Raymond's birthday, and it? I never oh, saw I it, but I need it for Why Today Doesn't Suck. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be good. Bye, Em. Thank okay, you. Bye. Okay. Now we can talk for real. Now, you can talk Whew. now we can really talk. Isn't Emily the best? I just love her. She's fun. She's fun. Okay, so what do we need to talk about here? I wanted to ask you, Dan, while we still have you, and uh, you are on the mom game, what are your biggest like um, parenting struggles? Whether it's you know something that's going on now, is there anything now that you can ask some girls or a girl any questions about parenting daughters? Like, what's what's hard for you? What is giving you hell? Well. Like I say, it was a glorious time until they were like 12 or 13. Yeah. And then they just, they do turn into different people. And I kind of think that's like a nature thing. Yeah. As far as, and I remember this a few years ago, my neighbor across the street, a lady had a uh, daughter who was 17 or 18 and she would always be bitching about her and like, oh, I can't wait till she goes to college. Can't wait till she goes to college. And I was thinking, this is a bad person. She's yeah. a parent and she wants her kid to go away while I was having the time of my life with my, you know, whatever, eight and 10 year old or whatever yeah. they were. And now I understand where she was coming from because those kid, the kids change the whole uh, puberty thing, I suppose, is part of it, right? Yep. And their, their personalities change. They just become different people and they're becoming their own person. And, it, it's true, and it's so much so that I guess I won't mind if my when my daughter leaves. Like I like her a lot, yeah. Or I suppose I should say I love her. Created, but, it but, was all. But nature like right. makes it so that so that you're kind of ready for them to go. That you want them to leave, maybe. Yeah. So is it just attitude? It's just teenage stuff, right? Like. Yeah, and you've said before the talking back. <laughs> you've told me off the air that you're you're. You remember as being a teenage girl and you feel bad about the way you acted sometimes, right? I, I do. And I talk, to about, I talk to my mom about it now because once you become an adult and especially once you have kids, you really realize like, oh my God, like all my parents sacrificed so much for me. They did so much for me. And once you hit a certain age, you just become a big a-hole to them. And I definitely did that. I think... I don't know, 15, 16, 17, it was, I was fighting back on everything, whether it was, I mean, I remember the main one for me was curfew. Like my mom had a curfew for me. It was 1230, which is actually pretty generous, I think. But you had the one or two friends that had like a 1 a.m. curfew or no curfew. So then when you were out and you were having fun and with like the guy maybe you had a crush on and all of a sudden you had to go and you had to go home and your friend got to stay there. Like, I just remember that being such a, a point of conflict for my mom and I, the curfew. And it was for my brother, too, to the point where he moved out and lived with my dad because my parents were divorced and my dad lived not that far away from us. So I look back at that now and, and it's just like those those things are so important to you when you're growing up. And I guess I that's the thing is you just have to remember the way you were. Yeah. And then when they're acting a certain way. Or you have to, you know, that's what I try to do is remember what a moron I was or bad decisions I was making and realize that's yeah. not going to really, right. it's not as bad as you think it is well, as a parent. And there's no way to tell your kids at this point, like the age that your kids are, or that my kids are going to be 13, 14, 15. Like there's no way to explain this at that point. You just, it seems like have to ride it out and do your best and then know that your kids are going to come back around hopefully, and like want to be more of your friend than be a little pain in your agitator. side and, and be an agitator. Yeah. So I think hopefully it all does come back around, but I, I'm not looking forward to those years. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to handle it because as hard as it is right now, you are right. Like you can tell them to go to sleep and they go to sleep for the most part and you are in control. So I, I don't know. I feel like teenage years, and neither Emily and I are really there yet, but I feel like that's going to be really hard too. And then that just makes me think, I mean, it's hard from every end of the spectrum. There's nothing harder in life than parenting. 
from a baby to a adult. It's hard. That's why we have this podcast in. Just yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's the hardest thing ever. Well, it is just because there's no real right way, right? Yeah. You can do so many things and well, there's so many examples of, "Oh, but I did it this way and my kid's fine." Uh, but I did it this way, you know, even I really wonder how much we have an effect on them at all. Only that I was raised by the exact same people my brother was raised by and we couldn't be more different. Yeah. Same thing with my wife and her brother. You know, they're total opposites, but they're raised in the exact same home by the same people. So, so like none of it matters anyway. Well, <laughs> th- it has to. There's some stats, right, that broken yeah. homes or, you know, inner city homes, you know, kids don't turn out as well. Or is that more of a financial thing? I don't know. You know, our, right. our kids that come from divorced households, don't turn out as well, maybe, as I don't know. two-parent it, homes. It, I don't know if that's a true... And not having the support. Because I think about even like with my family right now, with my husband gone, and the kids are starting virtual school and all of that, and I have a job. Uh, if I didn't have my mom to come help and do virtual school, like we would be SOL. And there's so many kids that don't have that and don't have that support system from grandparents or whatever it is. And I think that's why this is all really hard on people right now, too, is because it you're relying on parents to do all the schooling or a family to do all the schooling. And a lot of people can't, but is having a boy a lot different. Um, I guess you haven't had your girl at the same age as the boy. So you don't know if they're different. Or not. I can already tell though. It's a lot different. And it's also personalities, I think, but I just think that the boy, I would say that the boys, any, all the little boys that I've seen are just so like rough and tumble and don't slow down and they're all over the place and they're causing messes. Instead of playing with like one to two toys, they dump out the whole dang thing of toys like every single time. Whereas from what I've noticed from little girls is they're a lot more, I don't know, they're maybe a lot more calmer <laughs> is the word. Like my little girl is a lot calmer than my little boy. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad that I had one of each. I think that that's like the best way to go. And I'm having fun like you mentioned, doing a little coaching for riders, soccer, especially this season. Kelly's supposed to be the coach, but uh, he's still in Edmonton and the season's about to start. So I'm going to have to fill in the gap until he gets back. And I'm excited to try and coach Anna's or just at least watch and help her learn to play sports as well, which is going to be, I think, totally different when you're trying to get a bunch of girls out there to compete. And How old is your soccer that. league? Um, the soccer league is ages five and six. So they don't even have a goalie, right? No, they don't even have a goalie. That's what we, that's, that's the age I started. Yeah. So what's your coaching tip? And had a, well, I took over for a guy who said, Hey, I got all my stuff from YouTube. (laughs) So I'm like, Oh, okay, go, go to YouTube. And yeah, there's that YouTube, man. It'll tell you anything, right? Oh yeah. And so, you know, fun drills, things like that. I was, like I say, I was more of a fun coach where I was just trying to uh, be a glorified babysitter of sorts and yeah. try and kind of teach them the game. I'll never forget the time I was coaching a game where we didn't have goalies. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's just hard to get them. It's an exhaustive one hour of the practice, you know, and then the game time just to try and so teach them some kind of a semblance of you're going to go that way and spread out. That's a big thing. You probably always yell, right? Spread mm-hmm. out because they travel Just do in the this cluster little, ball. little uh, pack. Yeah. And so there was a dude who had like a girl that was younger than the girls playing. So the girls are five and six. And so he's got a girl on his back, on his shoulders, and he's watching the game. Well, the cluster and we, the coaches were allowed on the field yeah. to kind of help so direct them at this age. So the cluster comes down near our goal and then it you know it goes back and forth and all this and as as the cluster went back toward the other way the other side of the field which was good because we weren't near our goal anymore this guy is like what the fuck bro and I go and he's got this little girl on his back oh my gosh and he goes you got to tell her to get out of the fucking goal we're not allowed to have goalies oh my gosh. god damn it and I'm like Whoa, 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 what? And he goes, you ever play a fucking goalie? She should have blah, blah, blah. And like just F-bomb, S-bomb, just whatever, back and forth. 
And I'm like, seriously, are you up doing a bit now? Or are Is you recording me? I go, because I don't think he knew that I was someone that might record people and prank them or whatever. Right. And I'm like, are you recording me? Like, is this a prank or something? And punked? then he he didn't understand me saying that. Like he like that was I spoke foreign language to him. He's like, I said, blah blah blah, motherfucker. You know, get her out of the goal. You're. I go. You think I control where that girl was going? Like number eight. He's number eight was in the goal. She was playing goalie. I'm like, no, she, she's just running. I can't tell him where to go. Are you looking at this game? Oh, I go. Gosh. You got a little girl on your back and you're talking like that. And he's like. You fucking worry about you, brother. And you're and I'm like, Jesus, what are we doing? The parents here? are at that the age. parents can be insane. And I, also when you're coaching, one of the things that makes me nervous is that you know all the parents are watching you coach too. So oh, that's yeah. another thing. Like you're not just coaching, like all the parents are judging what you're doing and saying. Yeah, so. I said that I had the pro athlete who had daughters. Yes. Uh I was worried about judging by them. But yes, they're all second guessing you all the time. And they all want that other girl on the other team to fail and cry that night because yeah. they need their girls to uh, to win. It's it's just too much, man. It's it's hard, but it's fun. It really is. And I, I found myself then when I went to high school games, I would be very bothered because I wasn't in charge. And so I like to make out the lineup and tell the girls right. what to do. Right, and, and then you have to give up that power. Yeah, and now I have to just let her, you know, Sometimes it's my kid. Sometimes it's another kid that I'm like, she shouldn't be playing or she shouldn't be batting there or whatever. And you just got to let it happen. Just keep your mouth shut once you're no longer the coach. Um, okay. So we've covered the parenting. We've covered the sports. Have we? We've solved parenting? Uh, okay. No, that's never possible. It's Do you have this list in your head? Because you seem to have a list of things you want to get to. And I'm amazed that you don't have one note written in front of you. I never do for this. You're not even looking at your phone or anything. No, no. It's just, I it, I just let it flow naturally. Okay. The only other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is just, uh, I was interested in what, like, what else you enjoy? What are your other hobbies besides radio and being a really good dad? Because I think a lot of people... I don't know that I'm a really good dad. Well, I think you are, and I'm saying that. I think you are. It sounds like... You're doing all the right things and, and I like you're, doing you're hundred percent there for them. And that's like the biggest thing I feel like with being a dad or being a parent. Um, and they're doing well, they're doing really well. It sounds like both your girls, but outside of that, like for people that only know you as Dan McDowell on bad radio, who maybe they think you're an a-hole like I used to, hopefully not. If they actually listen, then they know you're not. But what else are you into? As like, long as you listen, it doesn't matter. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And if you don't listen, you should be listening to this guy every single day and and me. I'm there too. I do some tickers and every once in a while I talk. But we have fun. You should talk more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could talk your ear off if they let me. No, I want you to. Yeah. I think you realize that. You're an awesome addition to the ticket. Well, thank you. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but what else do I like to do? Yeah. I don't know. Boring stuff. Yeah. Like... I'm very a uh, habitual person. I like to get in a rut. Uh huh. I like to have the same lunch every day once I find a good lunch a and salmon. the same breakfast every day. Mm-hmm. And I like to, I like, uh, you know what I like on the weekend, if I can just do whatever I want to, I like to just do like yard work. Just. <laughs> yeah, you're boring. <laughs> edging the yard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, back when I used to cut the lawn, I would cut it in patterns. You right. Know, let's let's go diagonal this week and uh, just see what that looks like. Yeah. Pretty boring stuff. Are you into politics clean, and clean like clean the garage? I'm into reading. Big. Everything going on in the world, anything like that. Like it seems like I haven't gotten a real read on on you in that situation. Yeah, but less and less because I more and more I think what, what that does it I matter? have I have zero effect on anything. Yeah. Like, okay, I'll vote. <laughs> I'll be one out of 500 million voters or yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, we need stickers. I guess I'll vote with like a shrug. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be my sticker too, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I, I, I care and I would like things to be better and I would like more people to have more things and, you know, and then if I said that, I'd be yelled at, you're a socialist or, you know, it, everything's one or the other, like way either side. And I just... I feel like I'm just in the middle, but I think a lot of people are, right? 
Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just want things to be happy and I want to be happy. People and get along. I want other people to be happy and I don't want to drop bombs on anybody. It's and so volatile right now and people get so worked up about it. And I, Which maybe is why I gravitated to sports yeah. early on, you know? Yeah. Me too. But yeah, I like mindless things. I don't like the reality of the world. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I know there are starving kids, but I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Why? I mean, I, I mean, mean we'll do, if, if someone asks me if I can donate a dollar or two, that's kind of where I cut. Once yeah. they get to three dollars, I'm like, that's a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, at the grocery store. And you got to be able to handle your own thing, too. Right. Yeah. Do you feel bad when you hit the thing at Kroger? I that, always that says, feel so bad. No. I always feel so bad. But then I'm like, you want to know why? Like, here's the deal. I just got furloughed, blah, 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 blah. My husband, blah, blah, blah. Like, but you don't go into all that. But that's what I tell myself. I'm like, I want to be at the point where I can just say like $5, like every time, whatever it is they're asking for. Because it's always something that's, you know, a, a cause that is worthy. But I'm cynical that worthy. if you do that at the grocery store, then they raised a million dollars and they will get the big tax write off now because they raised a million dollars for this charity. And it's hard because you don't know exactly where it's going. Like you, you think you know where it's going, but does the grocery store take any of it? Do they and are take those bad cut? excuses? Is that an excuse just to not give I think to so. charity? Yeah. I think we've just <laughs> worked our way back to not no. donating. So I might be a bad person, and you might be as well. But I don't think so. You know. No, I think I think we're both good people. Um, we can justify I our actions. I think I have. Right? Yeah. So you you mentioned like something that you have to deal with that. And I deal with a little bit, but all of you guys as hosts on the ticket have to deal with like living your life in a way where you are always getting feedback, whether it's, you know, from people that you work with or especially the P1s and listeners. I'm just wondering how you handle all of that, because I know I've learned like it can really easily get in your head and mess with you. If people are just always like on their keyboard saying really mean things to you. I know Jake deals with it a lot. Bob's dealing with it a lot. I deal with it a lot. It's like every little thing you say. I'm trying to work through that because it's like you you don't want anything to be in your head when you're just trying to do radio and be you. But there's people out there that just want to like attack you and and can't wait to say something on Twitter to you. How do you handle that whole thing? Because there's a lot of people that listen and a lot of people that have opinions. Yeah. And you can just say there's a lot of people that hate me. I know what you're thinking. No, I don't actually feel that way anymore but (laughs) (laughs) uh no i think it's we want to be famous right in a way right you do this job in a way you are somewhat wanting to be on some kind of a stage and so that's part of it yeah so you you can't have the good and the bad i mean twitter is such a bad thing in that sense and i don't like the people that you know retweet the good comment about them Mm -hmm. but then you know, block the people that just say something a little bit mean about them. Like, yeah. well, they're all, they're all them. So, and it's like the world now wants to always be on because growing up, it was like, if you could get one of these cool jobs where you think about it when you go home and then you're always kind of working and, you know, uh, now the whole world is doing it because everybody's got a phone or your Instagram feed yeah. and everybody's doing a YouTube thing. And it wasn't part of this business you know, a decade ago or however long. And now it's such a big part of this business. Everybody has a voice on on judging you on how you're doing your job. But I always think that athletes shouldn't pay attention to those outsiders because like even me commenting on a football player or something or commenting, you might yell at me sometimes when I'm telling you that uh, Rick Bonus doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> you know. No, you, just I try to give you the other side. Yeah, but... And, they shouldn't care what I think. What would, what do I know? I don't know yeah. anything. Uh, so why would they care what I'm yelling about on the radio? We're doing it, trying to have an entertaining radio show that that Stars fans are, are excited to listen to and talk about. Yeah. So, you know, why would why should I care when you know a couple people say something mean on Twitter or whatever? Like I've never blocked anyone on Twitter. I don't. You know, say your thing. Yeah. I suppose that's like a challenge. Somebody's going to come at me and start, you know, uh, putting real hate-filled racial stuff or something over and over and over. Just and maybe that would make me block, you, block you, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I've seen racist stuff come out there, and I don't know. It's just like whatever. There are people. There are bad yeah. people. There are good people. And that's a good way to be. It's. I do care more about, like, our ratings and stuff like that. 
you know? And yeah. so if we get good ratings, then I figure, well, that's the number that we're worried, or that's the, the voice we're worried about hearing. Right. Because if we don't get good ratings, then they'll just get rid of us, even if everybody loves us on Reddit, right? <laughs> Yeah, what are you talking about, Reddit? I never look at that. No one looks at that. I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah, I have. And I have, but not a lot. And I know, you know, there's some guys at the station look at it way more, some guys. But in the long run, it really doesn't matter. And I do appreciate that these people are passionate enough. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. It's a very small percentage of people, from what I understand. We might have 25,000 people at a time listening to the station. Uh, at least in non-COVID days when there's more people listening to the radio yeah. and they're on the road. So if we have 25,000 people in a 15-minute period that are tuned in, you know, how many of them contact you? And it used to be gauged by how many phone calls you would get. What would that be? 10 during a show, maybe, back in the right. old take phone calls days. Uh, now it's, you know, you get 100 comments on Twitter or something. Well, think of that in comparison to the amount of ears that are listening to give you that rating that you have Mm -hmm. so it's it's a very very small but a passionate group you know they're really they probably also buy uh soda or you know uh, grapevine fords or whatever you know thing that you're promoting right because they're into what you're saying too so their hate's going to be like that and their love might be like that but i don't know you can't i think you're a good person to model the way you handle it all just don't let it like get in your mind I don't like to engage. Yeah. Like, I don't care to argue back and forth if it's not beneficial. Like, I don't know if you heard the Musers play a piece of audio this morning. You might have been in there there by this time. Like, Junior played this piece of audio that was him uh, calling a radio station in Detroit. Yeah. Did you hear that? that? Yeah. So, that's where we were in Detroit at the same time. For the Super Bowl, and we both we all went to a Red Wings game. The Musers went in a different car, and me and Bob went in another car. Maybe Donovan. I don't recall if Donovan was there. I don't think he was because I don't have audio of him calling this radio show either. But we used to call radio shows to prank them. Did you know that? I picked up on that. Okay, it's called the Irvin Joe game, mm-hmm. and it's modeled after a duo in Colorado named Irvin Joe, who had a sports talk show, and they seemed to leave the callers on as long as they wanted. Oh. So our game was, well, let's call Irvin Joe and see how long we can stay on and try to work in ticket shtick and mm-hmm. little this or that, docking. <laughs> Back then, we didn't yeah. do docking humor docking as much as now. so 2020. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's all the rage. It is. All the kids are doing it. Yeah. Eh. So Junior played this piece of audio. It was in... How I'm bringing it back to relate to whatever we were talking about, and I'm about to forget what what we were even talking about, (laughs) is that I called for the show. So we were going to call and play this game, and I so I recorded it. Junior didn't know we were doing this. He called just to have fun and do a prank. And they weren't going to record it or anything or use it on their show the next day. So as far as engaging and arguing with people, I'm happy to do that on our show if it might translate into ratings and that's what my job is. I don't get paid by Twitter. No. And there's no reason for me to really care if we get engagements or it's quantify. I feel like that's a a way for the print media to quantify how important you are. Mm -hmm. Whereas our quantification is ratings. And we get, we used to get them only every three months, which was awesome. And now it's like every month. So it's just more to nitpick and yeah. go over and worry about. And it's because we're never happy when they're good. Like it's just, well, it's supposed to be good. And then we yeah. just feel really bad That's if they're not as I good. That's something I wasn't prepared for. It's just like the pressure that's put on, not really me, but you guys for ratings. I, I don't, it's, it's. That's what, that's the that's problem what drives with the bus though, I guess. The problem, but the good thing about playing for the Yankees, right? right. The ticket yeah. has been the Yankees. And when you have number one ratings every book for 10 straight years, right. and then you get number three. Yeah, everyone wants you to get back to that spot. And you're, do do? you're dying, whereas every other radio station in town would love to be number three. Yeah. And would probably sell their soul to be number three for the next 10 years. Right. Whereas if we were number three for the next 10 years, they would say we have failed. Yeah. So. It makes sense. You know. Is what I'd it still is. rather be on the You'd ticket. You'd rather be the Yankees. I'd rather be on the ticket. 
and have people up your rear yeah. if you get number three. Yeah. Yeah. It was just new to me, you know, because in TV, you never hear about your rating. I mean, at least I didn't. The things I was doing, I know that the higher ups did, but it was never like, oh, you only got this rating for this week's stars insider. <laughs> so you got to make next week's better. But it's all just part of the deal and the biz. I think we're good. I think we've covered everything. And it's probably based on how good the team does, right? Yeah. Well, that, that was always my frustration. Yes. It was like, well, more people are going to watch my little show that I do when the team's doing well. And honestly, that's like our whole life. We've been linked to how well this team does. Which is why you root. That's why I root yeah, hard. So you're, yeah. Your, your husband works for the team and you're like, right. this means more money if we win games. That's true. But even if it didn't, like now I've been around him so much and I know the guys and all of that. Like I want the best for all of them and everybody in the organization. But yes, the bonuses and all of that help. So let's take some calls. <laughs> let's take some calls. Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> no calls, or this would be a good time to do that. But no, this has been so let's fun. Let's talk about Emily. Okay, she's not here. What can we say about her? I don't think I have anything. Can we say bad anything say derogatory about her? About Emily, she's one of my favorite people ever. She's she awesome. pretty cool. She once did a. This is over ten years ago. She came in to do a makeover of me. Did you know that? No. Yeah, she. I guess she was making fun of the jeans I was wearing. Uh huh. Or something like behind your back. She was making fun of. Uh, well, she's not that kind of person. She will tell you in, yeah. to your face. Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember if it was at a game or in a press box or something like that, and or you know whatever. She was. Yeah. She's just a uh, a cool person, and she'll join in on the uh, the dog pile or whatever. For and sure. Somehow we got her to take me shopping. Okay. And buy jeans that were more befitting somebody. What was wrong with your jeans? Uh, well, it probably started because Bob would make fun of him because it had like a little uh, a little pocket in the side, which I thought <laughs> was great for the cell phone. Oh. And then maybe it even had like a loop on it. And he's like, what are you going to do? Hang your hammer on that thing? And I'm right. like, I don't know. Maybe if I get a hammer, I'll, I will. You'll have somewhere to put it. I I fancy my... I have a uh, workbench and wow. a toolbox, but I don't have any skills as well, far as being able to do anything. Is the- first step of the process i guess and then you learn the skills eventually did you have a workbench growing up uh no i didn't but my best friend we were talking about best friends today with donnie and norman i do have a best friend but she can build anything she like made a headboard for her bed she builds tables she built a pond in her backyard because they decided there was room and they wanted a pond and they wanted fish like she's amazing i can't do anything i built a fire pit Okay. And I watched YouTube to do it. Well, that's something. Yeah. That's took, something. Took notes. I think that... Why are we talking about... Oh, yeah, because Emily did yeah, the makeover. Sorry. I think that men... There needs to be more training for men to be handy in life. I think that men need to be handier in general. You don't sound like a girl dad. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't women be able to be handy as well? Why does it have to be men? Both. Both. But the men are like just... I like I do the dishes. I love doing the dishes. Yeah. I should tell you that. See, I like mundane things. Yeah. I do like doing the dishes. I was like, what else do you, I literally what like else it. Do you enjoy? And you said mowing the yard. Yeah, and edging. Doing, <laughs> edging and doing dishes. And I know you're trying to, edging is also like some dirty thing. I why would you know. say I, that? I know. That's I why was you, not even, that's not that's why, why I said it. I know that's why you keep saying edging. I've, no, my I've wife. been around you damn people too damn long. And my I know. wife does the mowing uh-huh. and I do the edging. And I think it's an unfair distribution because edging is very difficult. Yeah. But I also think the yard looks like crap if you mow it and don't edge it. I don't think edging looks very hard. I've never done it. Yeah. Why don't you come on over? <laughs> anyway, Although if, I- <laughs> if you get a uh, chance to ride that riding mower, in my experience, you will not get off. Well... I'll take or you'll get off it. after a little while. Stop. I, stop. <laughs> I'm never going to do that. Um, and I'll probably never mow a yard. That's not my thing. I have, Never? I have hobbies. That's not on a bucket list? I have list? hobbies. That's not how I spend my free time. No, not on the bucket list. Like you didn't do that. We were talking today about you getting cancer. and when, Yeah, we did. Yeah. And whether or not if you got cancer, would you go do some bucket list things? So you're like saying- get on you, a writing lawnmower? Yeah, if you got cancer again, would you like, uh, you know what? I'm going to go edge a yard. <laughs> Before no, this thing gets uh, out of that's control. That's more reason to say, hey, I cannot mow my own yard. I have cancer. Someone come do this for me. That's okay. not something So that I, I should be able do. to hire a babysitter to come watch my kid while I sleep in the morning after you, I don't think you have a C-section. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with that. We all need our sleep, and I would love to hire a babysitter. Okay, you would not have been mad at me. To come let me sleep in the morning. 
uh, because no. I had to play Tiger Woods golf. I would have rather you been like my husband's been with me after I have babies both times and he doesn't leave until I leave. How and did grandparents? Oh, okay. So we didn't have that luxury or the babysitter you hired could have just watched your kid and you could have stayed with your wife. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That too. <laughs> Anyways. See, I'm a jerk. This has been fun. You're not a jerk. Thank you for coming all the way into our vocal now studio. This is the second time I've been out of Tarrant County since well, March. I was thinking maybe you needed to leave the Dragon Den. It was Things... kind of crazy being out there on the road. Yeah, I bet. People Things... still drive real slow in the left lane. Do they? Oh, my gosh. Too slow. Well, yeah. get over. It's for passing only. I know. Sometimes when I'm when I'm driving, because I've been doing a lot of driving to Austin and back, I'll find myself in the left lane and I don't even realize Daydreaming. it. And there's just a car like on my ass. <laughs> ah, I'm in the left lane. I'm that person. I'm that person. And then I try to get over really quickly. So they might be doing it accidentally. Okay. You know, you never I'll know. Think Everyone's got time. a lot on their mind right now. But no, thank you very much, Dan, for this Emily the best. as You're the well. Best. Yeah, this has been awesome. And thanks for coming all the way here, all the way from South Lake. So... We appreciate it, and we will see everybody else on next week's edition of The Mom Game. Who will be in studio next? You never know. Mom Game Out. You want to say Mom Game Out like we do? Say it. Do I want to? Just say it. Oh, okay. That was rhetorical then. You weren't really asking me. Can do that. Mom Game Out. Nailed it. Mm-hmm.